So you want to make an All the Mods 9 server. Now, first things first, I do want to mention that All the Mods 9 is extremely resource intensive, meaning a lot of times you will need a very, very good computer, especially to host a server and play All the Mods 9 on the same computer. You may even see different lag in this video because even though I have a very high-end computer for making videos like this one, All the Mods 9 can sometimes stress the computer even still. So I want to keep that in mind and talk about that up front. On top of that, you're going to need a good internet connection because the internet connection that's used on this server is your internet connection. So anyone who's connecting to the server is connecting through that. And because of that, this is only meant for your friends, your family, people that you trust, because anyone who joins this server has your IP address. And that means they can do things like DDoS you, which basically means hit your internet offline and make it inaccessible, as well as figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates. But before you click off the video, if any of those apply to you, for example, you don't have a great computer, what can you do? Well, that's where our company, Simple Game Hosting, comes in, and it will allow you to host an All the Minds 9 server quickly and easily. You can check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple to get here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and quickly show you how easy it is to set up an All the Minds 9 server on Simple Game Hosting, and then I'll show you how to do it on your own computer without purchasing anything a little later in the video as well. That's what the majority, 90% of the video is going to be. Let's go ahead and quickly get one set up on Simple Game Hosting. The link in the description down below will take you here. Go and click get started. For all the mods 9, I would recommend at least an 8 gigabyte server. You can sometimes run it on 6 gigabytes, but usually by generating chunks and things like that, it quickly runs out of RAM. So 8 gigabytes is what I'd recommend there. Click get started, and that will take you to here where you can choose your billing cycle, as well as come down here and select your version. Doesn't really matter because the mod pack install will cover that, but we can go ahead and select forge, as well as the location that you want. There are tons of locations with more being added all the time. I'm going to go ahead and go with Miami. Click continue, and then it will go through the purchase process by clicking check out and getting your server purchased. After you've purchased your server, you will get an email, an account created email that will look like this. Let's go ahead and click the set up your account button to be taken to the dashboard, create your password, create your account, and log in here. Now watch how easy it is to get an all the mods 9 server up and running from here. Go ahead and click manage server on your server, then click on the mod packs tab. You may also want to go ahead and stop your server if it's not already stopped by using the stop button. On the mod packs tab at the top, you want to find all the mods 9. Right now it's the uh, most recent pack, but if you're watching this a few years in the future, where it's not as most popular, you can go ahead and type in ATM9 and hit enter, and there it is. Go ahead and click the version drop down box and select the most recent version right here at the bottom. Click install and then click yes. And now all the mods 9 is installing. That's all the work you have to do on your server, other than starting the server after the mod pack's installed, to get all the mods 9 up and running. I'm also going to go ahead and launch it locally, because unfortunately every mod pack that you have on the server, every mod, has to be local. And luckily, that's done through CurseForge, but it does mean you will need to play all the mods 9 locally. If you do want to know how to do that, there is an in-depth guide on getting all the mods 9 in the description down below, as well as a guide on CurseForge if you want to go through and get CurseForge set up exactly perfectly. However, that is covered in the All the Mods 9 tutorial as well. You can send this to your friends. Nevertheless, while the installer is running and All the Mods 9 is working, I won't make you sit here and wait, so I'll see you once both of those are finished. The server is now finished installing All the Mods 9. Click on Console and click Start. The IP address for your server is right up here on the Console tab, uh, right next to your server name. You can go ahead and click on this to copy it, and we can take this back into Minecraft and join the server. So All the Mods 9 just finishing up now, getting open locally as well, and once it's done with that, we can join the server. Doing so is as easy as joining any other server. Clicking on multiplayer, clicking add server, naming it whatever you want for the server name, simple game hosting, for example, and then pasting in the server address. When you click done, the server will resolve, and we can join by just double clicking on it like I said, any other Minecraft server. The same way you join Hypixel is how you join All the Mods 9. With simple game hosting, you just have to be playing All the Mods 9 through CurseForge, unfortunately. But now we're connecting to the server. Once that's done, and the initial connect on a modded server takes a long time, just being truthful here you can see we're logging in we are encrypting joining the world and we're good to go now like i said this takes a minute because modded servers are extremely resource intensive even on your local computer when joining the server here now as you can see in the background we're good where ram is good cpu usage is great but it just takes a minute to join a modded server and load the terrain in and all that stuff the initial first time but let's say you are have to have issues joining the server for whatever reason well, that's where Simple Game Hosting comes in to help you out because there's live chat support in the bottom right of the site. You can click down here and talk with a real person 
about what's going on in your server and fixing any issues with the server along the way. Because while we make things as simple as possible, occasionally you want to add a mod, occasionally you want to change something, occasionally you'll have a different issue. And that's where Simple Game Hosting can come in and help. There we go. We are now on the server. And um, yeah, took a minute to join in. But as you can see, performance is smooth now that we are online and in the server. Initial join on servers is a lot because it's figuring out quests. It's figuring out pretty much every single thing that needs to be done on the server. And uh, we have CPUs and hardware built to run modded Minecraft server workloads and simple game hosting. But that transitions me to hosting it yourself. It is very resource intensive, but let's go ahead and get it done. Now, in order to do this, we want to go ahead and close out of all the mods 9. We'll also go ahead and close out of Simple Game Hosting here and go to this link. This is in the description down below. It's the second link down below, and it's the link to the mod pack page for all the mods 9. The reason we're going here is we need to download the server files for all the mods 9. So go ahead and click on files here, and then we want to find the most recent version. It's this one up here towards the top and click on it. Then you want to scroll down and you'll see additional files down here, server files specifically. Click the three dots on the right hand side and click download file. And now you're downloading the All The Mods 9 server files. You may need to keep or save these files depending on your browser. And there you go, they are now downloading. It's quite a large file, right? As you can see, it's 800 megabytes, nearly a gig. So it's gonna take it a minute to download. And once it does finish downloading, we will need to extract or unzip it. You also need Java and the Jarfix installed in order to run all the mods 9. And luckily, we do have links in the description down below on how to get both Java 17 and the Jarfix. Now, don't run the Jarfix until you get Java. So get Java, then run the Jarfix, and then you'll be able to start your all the mods 9 server. If for whatever reason you can't start the server, this is what you need. You need Java 17, you need the Jarfix installed and working. Like I said, you'll also need CurseForge and all the mods 9 installed via CurseForge. Right here, we've already done that. If you haven't, we have guides on that in the description description down below as well in order to ensure that you have those working. At this point, All The Mods 9 is downloaded. We can minimize our browser and let's go ahead and move it to our desktop. It's going to be found in our downloads folder here and there it is. Once you start your down desktop, we want to go ahead and create a new folder. So right click new folder and then we're going to title this ATM9 or simple game hosting. Whatever you want to title this folder, it can be titled. We're going ATM9 simple game hosting because simple game hosting is the easiest way to host an ATM9 server. Drag this to your newly created folder, that zip file we had. And if you don't see .zip at the end, we want to come up here to the top, click view and make sure file name extensions is checked. As you can see, if I uncheck that .zip disappears, if I check it, zip appears. That's going to be more important after we extract the file, but it's cool to see it now. That way you know it's working. So right click on this zip file, click extract all and click extract. And now what it's going to do is extract over 1,000 items from this zip file that is used to run in all the Mods 9 server. So we just kind of have to sit back and let this finish. Once it is finished, it will open this, right? Which is a file that has the server files in it. You can delete the .zip file because you should have a folder called server files. Open that, and then you have another folder called server files. Open that, and then you have this, which is your you know actual Minecraft server files. What do we do with these? We're gonna drag these from this folder to the folder we created on our desktop, right like so. Now, if we open the folder on our desktop, we'll immediately see the files and folders that we need and we can go ahead and get our server started. How do we do that? Well, first off, we want to double click on the server start.bat file, server start.bat. When we do that, it's going to go ahead and give you this warning. Are you sure you want to do this? We do. So we're going to go ahead and click more info and then run anyway. You may get a Windows user control pop-up. If you do, you just go ahead and accept that. But as you can see, it is now starting. It's going to fail. The reason it's going to fail is we need to agree to the Minecraft ULA. We got to run the server first to generate a few files as well as get the Minecraft ULA to accept it. So we're just going to sit here and let this finish. And once it does finish, we can see what it looks like. Failed to load EULA.txt. And it says restarting automatically in 10 seconds. We can just let it do that. But we have this new EULA.txt file in our folder here. Open this up and assuming you agree to the Minecraft ULA, which we do, change EULA equals false to EULA equals true. TRUE exactly like this. And then go ahead and click file, save to save the EULA.txt. Now this may fail again in the background. If it does, that's perfectly normal. But if it doesn't, which as you can see right now, it's not, it's, it's moving and grooving. Things are generating in the background here because it is working. You're good to go. But if it does fail one more time after getting to the EULA, 
perfectly normal. So just let it go ahead and do that. And then double click the run.bat here if you need to in order to start the server. Or sorry, not the run.bat, the start server.bat. So there you have it. The server is now starting. It's good to go. And once it finishes, I'll show you what to look for that way you know it is finished starting. So when the server is done starting, you're looking for this. Dedicated server took this amount of time to load. You're also looking for the world generation file to be done. Um, sometimes you can search through here and find it, but at this moment I'm struggling to find it. Basically, dedicated servers took this amount of time to start or load. There you go, that is a sign it's done. Now at this point, you're the only person that can join this server, and I would actually encourage you to go ahead and do that. Join this server, make sure it's working, make sure you can play on the server, because if you you can't play on the server while running all the mods 9, which that's the next step. Go ahead and install the mods 9 if you don't have it and play Minecraft using it then you really can't host the server for your friends because it's just going to cause more lag and stress on your computer the more friends that you have joining the server. So we're going to go ahead and launch all the mods 9 now and I'll see you once it's open to join our local server here. And again, you're the only person that can join this server at this moment. Once we test join the server, make sure things are working, we'll go ahead and enable your friends to be able to join the server. With all the mods 9 open, we can go ahead and join the server. How do we do that? What IP address do we use? Well, we're going to use the IP address address local host. So if we add a server here, we can name the server local connection and then the server address is local host. You're the only person that can join the server using the IP address local host. But again, it will allow us to test it. So as you can see here, all the mods nine local connection set up, you can double click to join that and we'll go ahead and encrypt and join on in. It took a second on simple game hosting. It's going to take a second now. So we just kind of have to sit back and wait and let this finish for a few minutes. So here we are. We are now in the server. Wow, this is a cool spawn. I will make sure that we give you that seed here in a moment. But nevertheless, we are now in the server and uh, things are working we can join. If we were seeing a lot of lag or something like that while we were running around, um, that would be an indication that our hardware just is not good enough in order to run this server, especially with our friends joining the server as well. Um, also, if your server fails to start, that can be another indication that the hardware just is not good enough for the server to be able to be ran on the computer. So nevertheless, there we go. We are now online though. How do we allow our friends to join this server? Well, we want to go ahead and close out of all the mods nine and we want to stop the server. Before we do that though, there is the seed for this server if you're interested in playing it. Then we go ahead and type stop over here. You always want to make sure you type stop in the console like this and hit enter to properly. As you can see, save the world, save the chunks, save everything properly. And then we want to go ahead and press control C to cancel this and Y and hit enter to terminate it. That finally closes the server out completely. Now, in order to port forward, we need to get our IPv4 address and default gateway. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the start menu and type in CMD for the command prompt here. Open that up and then in command prompt, what we wanna do is type in IP -N -F -I -G, IP config exactly like that and hit enter. That's then gonna give us some different command prompt information here and some different IPs that we need. The first one is the IPv4 address. So we type IPv4 here and that is on the line right here. IPv4 address in our case is 192.168.1.3. Yours is most likely different. We also want the default gateway and that is right here, default gateway. 192.168.1.1. Now yours might be different, and if yours is numbers and letters, like this first line is numbers and letters, it's a longer string, go to the next line, because under that, there'll be one that's just numbers, there'll be nothing over here to the left, and just numbers on the right, that's the default gateway that you want. Now what do we do with this info? Well, we actually wanna go ahead and open up our browser, and then up here at the top, we wanna to type in the default gateway, so 192. Dot one six eight dot one dot one. Now some sort of a login box will open. This is what mine looks like, but yours may be completely different. Maybe in a nice GUI or something like that. What we want is our router's username and password here. Luckily we have an in-depth guide on how to find your router's username and password. And it goes through everything, all these different methods that you can use. Start with method one, work your way down through method five, and then eventually you'll be able to log into your router after finding the username and password. I'm gonna go ahead and log into mine now. So once you're logged into your router, what you're looking for is port forwarding. Now, this can be different on every router. So of course, we've got a guide on it. How to port forward on any router. This video at the top goes through port forwarding on all the top routers that are out there today. It's worth a watch even if your specific router brand isn't in there because your router is probably like a lot of other routers that are out there. So go through that, watch that guide and get everything set up and running on your router. 
but I'm not going to leave you there. We're going to go through everything in this video as well, specifically the common terms that port forwarding may be called. It could be called port forwarding. It could be called port forwarding slash port triggering. It could be called apps in gaming. It could be called app forwarding, APP forwarding. It could be called NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It could be called NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It could be in the network, security, advanced administration, or admin tabs. And for me, it is in the advanced tab and then it is in advanced again, and then it is in port forwarding slash port triggering. For you, it could just as easily be in security or administration or administration in advanced. Click around your router until you find something down along the lines of port forwarding though. It could also be called single port forwarding, but once you find it, you wanna go ahead and add a new port forward, add a service, or if you've got just a big list of empty boxes, start with the first row. Go ahead and click add custom service in my case, and then for our name or ID on the port forward, we can go ahead and call this whatever we want. I'm gonna call it all the mods nine because that's what this port forward is for. Then for our protocol, we wanna do TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. Either way, you wanna make sure that both of these protocols are selected. And if you can only select one, do this twice, leaving everything else the same, once for TCP and once for UDP. Nevertheless, for anything involving the word port, P-O-R-T, you wanna go ahead and enter in 25565. So external port, 25565, cause the word port's there. Internal port, hey, there's that word, port. So we're gonna enter in 255. Six five as the number for the port. Now for the internal or local IP address, this is going to be your IPv4 address, which in my case was 192.168.1.3. You may also have a big drop down box instead of an IP address, and this is going to show all the computers connected to your network, all the devices connected to your network. You want to go ahead and select your computer in this list and make sure that this computer you're starting the server on. Then go ahead and click apply your save and most of you are done with your port forward. Some of you though can't save yet because you need an external or outside IP. Luckily, every single person watching this video needs an external outside IP address. And we have in the description down below, what's my IP? Why do you need this? Well, because this is how your friends are gonna join your server. I also just noticed that I have a VPN on, so let me go ahead and turn that off really fast. There we go, and now if I refresh the page, 43 will be all that you can see here because that's my IP address, it ends in 43, but you can also see the other stuff people can get from your you know, IP, and that's why I use the VPN, right? Because you can get your region, city, the latitude and longitude coordinates from your IP address, and it's very, very important that you keep this stuff private, and it's also why this server is only for your friends, your family, people that you trust. But nevertheless, you can click on the IP here to copy it, and all you can see is 4.3, just so you know we're using the same IP once we get in Minecraft. If you did need this for your port forward, go back there, paste it in, and save the port forward. But at this time, we can go ahead and minimize our browser, and go ahead and open up and start our server. How do we do that? Well, we double click on the start server.bat file, right like so. It's then going to go ahead and start the server. We also want to go ahead and launch up all the mods 9 because we have to use that to join the server. So I'm going to go ahead, let my computer open both of these and get the server started, get all the mods 9 open, and then once it's finished, we'll be able to join. All right, so the server is now started as well as the mod pack is open. We can click on multiplayer here. We've got local connection. We've got simple game hosting. We can go ahead and add our public IP connection. We want to paste this in. As you can see, 4.3 is what you can see here because again, you don't want to give this out to anybody in everybody then we go ahead and click done here and double click on the public ip here to join using it now you may not be able to join using your public ip that is perfectly normal only people who have to join via your public IP are your friends because you can join via local host. The reason you might not be able to join via your public IP is because some internet service providers just do not allow it. They do not allow you connecting back to yourself, which is what you're doing when you're using your public IP. So keep that in mind. And just like always with that, all the mods nine, it's taking a second for us to load in here, but it actually will be a little faster the second time we load in. But super resources is a mod pack and that's proven by how long it takes to join a server or even start and join a single Player world it takes a while with this mod pack but nonetheless once we're in the server things are proven to be working there but your friends may not be able to join via the public IP even if you did the port forward correctly which is the first place you should look the reason for that is because you need to allow Java through your Windows Defender firewall this works with mod packs and it goes over everything you need to know to allow Java through the Windows Defender firewall this covers it all here it could also be an antivirus in your computer blocking the connection but most likely it is Windows Defender and this covers everything you need to know about that there's also this guide, which is how to fix broken Minecraft servers. If you're having an issue with your server, this is a great place to look and fixing different issues with it are covered here. 
Nevertheless, if we minimize our browser, we can see that we have now loaded in game and we're on the All the Mods 9 server. Keep in mind that if you do host with a remote host like Simple Game Hosting, you don't have to worry about hardware, but you also don't have to port forward and all that stuff, making the process truly so much more simple and easier. You also don't even have to download any files other than the mod pack itself to your computer. Anyway, if you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. Enjoy your new All the Mods 9 server. This is such a cool spawn, and we will see you in the next video. Peace.